We're yeah. joined right now on RealerCulture.com by Harry Siemens of SiemensSays.com. He is based in southern Manitoba, but is visiting us, I guess, or joining us right now from uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Welcome to the Harry. Harry, let's talk a little bit about the pork business in Manitoba. And I think this is sort of a general issue, even uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan as well. What is happening right now to the pork business in uh, in our country? Our uh, pork industry, other than some of the bigger players, except for some of the provinces in Ontario and Quebec, where they do have a bit more support. But in Western Canada, from Manitoba and uh, in West, uh, the pork industry is, is rapidly disappearing, especially the independents, because uh, this year has been a real up and down yo-yo. Initially, it didn't look that good, and then it looked like it was going to be really good. And then once the drought started to show up on the markets and the corn price took off, that's when, uh, and the price of pork uh, somehow went down the other way, that's when a lot of the producers are simply saying, you know what, I can't hang on any longer. Unless the banker is making them stay in the business, uh, for the most part, some of these guys are just absolutely done. They, they dug such deep, deep holes, they thought this year was going to be a little bit better. They had locked in some prices that were actually making them 20 and $30 a hog. But right now, anybody that puts uh, feeders or weanlings into a barn and wants to finish them, they know, they know that they will probably lose 35, 40 bucks a pig. Is this story all being driven from feed costs or is there other variables right now affecting the business? Well, the variables, of course, are the last five years where they dug these deep holes. Would this have been, uh, had they ever been able to get out of those deep holes, then this wouldn't be such a big problem. But with uh, what's going on right now and what's gone on in the last five years, uh, the variables right now are the price of pork has gone down and the price of feed has gone through the roof as far as hog producers are concerned. So if you're looking at $8 corn or seven fifty. You know, for weanling producers in Manitoba, they were looking to sell weanlings at 35 and 40 bucks, and all of a sudden they dropped right down to three dollars and four dollars, and and then freight they had to pay on top of that. So it and that reason why is because producers in Minnesota, in Iowa, in those places, they simply said we're not putting any pigs in our barns because six months down the road we know that we're going to lose 35 to $40 a pig if we start feeding them. So they were emptying barns, and that market fell absolutely flat on its face. Well, how, so how, how, that Perry, are- how far are we from Manitoba and Alberta and Saskatchewan producers making that same call as some of our uh, peers in the U.S.? The uh, producers, weanling producers, if we would check with the call places like Quintains and Brandon, uh, whole herds have been coming in, whole sow herds. I know one producer, you know, he had $400,000 invested in his sows. He sold them two weeks ago for 100000 He just wanted to get rid of them because it just didn't make any sense to raise pigs. Right now, uh, it depends on where you're at. If you've got a, a contract and shackle space with Maple Leaf or whether it's uh, uh, Nipawa, you know, uh, high life in Nipawa, Manitoba, uh, those guys uh, continue to to survive because the plant in Brandon needs uh, uh, thousands of hogs every week, and and so does uh, the one in Nipawa. So somewhere along the line, those guys want to continue to produce, and 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 they will. But how deep those pockets are, only time will tell. So what needs that, in your opinion, Harry? What needs to happen here to fix this mess? That's uh, the the sixty four dollar question. I've been in this business forty one years, uh, and uh, Sean, I've never seen anything like it. On one hand, you've got producers. My nephew tells me that his uh, crop this year uh, basically will gross as much as it cost him to pay buy that land a number of years ago. Not quite, but almost. And then uh, on the other hand, the hog producer is going broke. So where does uh, where does it fit? Government programs don't work. I think we simply somehow have to get these producers out of the business, the ones that can, leave them some dignity. But you know that the free market system doesn't always work that way, and government can't bail everybody out. At this point, I don't think. Some people are calling for, uh, you know, let's get uh, ethanol out of the corn business, right? Well, that might be a buck, a buck and a half a bushel. That doesn't solve this problem. But $6 corn, $7 corn, $8 corn, 
just doesn't make it for the livestock producer right now. Has the Manitoba government provided any sort of appetite to uh, sort of like a buyout for them to shut down their operations? Nothing. No, in, in, in Manitoba, we, in Manitoba did just the opposite. You know that we have that in, from 2008, 2008, we have the complete moratorium on any hog expansion. So, so on one hand, uh, hog producers were becoming more efficient. As you know, genetics uh, keep improving the m- number of piglets. So those producers, even the Hutterite colonies that, that wanted to become more efficient, well, they can't expand by even one pig. So they couldn't improve their efficiencies even if they wanted to. I know one colony, you know, they're feeding a whole bunch of pigs off-site because they can't expand so they look for empty barns and 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 do it that way but right now i believe when i talk to rolf penner who's a grain farmer and a hog farmer at morris manitoba and he started uh, from an even keel he didn't have the big deep hole that others are in but he knows for a fact that he's going to lose probably 35 40 dollars on the feeders that he put in a couple of months ago and that he has to feed out if over the next four to uh, four to five months right so that's uh you know uh, that that's horrendous he thought he was going to have a great year on the farm uh grain farm while well, it's all going in to support that hog business uh diversification but but why with the excess capacity of all the barns why would you want to build more to build more barns why wouldn't we use up the excess excess capacity that we already have in the province well it was like this. Uh, somebody could take uh, that excess capacity. Like if, if as of 208, you had certain number of animal units on your farm, no matter, matter whether you had access space or not, you can't increase the hog numbers other than, you know, fill up that barn. You can't expand anything, no matter what. You can't expand by, by one sow. And so, uh, uh, yeah, the other thing is with that excess capacity, it uh, it all has to be certified. You have to get your lagoon certified. You have to make sure the, the the hog barn, if it's been empty for three years. I know we had that buyout, which some of those buyouts are now, uh, the three years that they had to stay empty are now coming due. I talked to one producer who thought he had looked after his barn quite well. He says, Harry, I have to, if I want to put pigs back in there, I have to really redo a lot of the electricity and all the other stuff because I didn't turn, I should have kept my fans on. I didn't keep my fans on. And the corrosion that's there, he says, it's going to cost him a significant amount if he would want to put pigs back in there. So there's all kinds of ifs and buts and whereas. The only thing right now is that the hog industry in Western Canada, for the most part, at least the independents, are in deep, deep trouble. And I'm afraid that we may not have many independents left once the next six months are over. Okay, Harry, thanks a lot for the insight on the pork business, and we'll uh, talk to you again very shortly. Take care. Thank you. 